What's going on guys, and welcome to a new video on the channel. If you guys don't know me already, my name is RPM Pickle, I'm a 4-time Asphalt 9 Esports finalist, and I have multiple world records and top 1 finishes, and I'm here to help you get better at Asphalt 9. So today we'll be talking about 5 secret tricks that pro players use to go fast. If you've been playing Asphalt 9 for a while, you've probably heard of tricks like Floaty Drift, Punch Drift, and Nitro Break Trick, but there's a good chance you haven't heard about these tricks. These tricks are subtle strategies that you might have even seen in reference runs before and not realized it. And that's why they're secret. They're easy to miss if you haven't learned about them before. So without further ado, let's get into it, starting with our first trick, which is Terrain Abuse. In Asphalt 9, even if a section of the track seems like it's flat, it almost never is. The best Asphalt 9 players know the terrain of every track like the back of their hands, because they need to know which part of the track to drive on to minimize speed loss. And I'm sure you know that sections of rough terrain can slow you down, but did you know that some sections of terrain can actually help you preserve speed? And that's where Terrain Abuse comes in. When drifting over certain ridges in the track, if you can position your car so that the front inside wheel is lifted off the ground, your car will essentially lose zero speed while drifting, if performed ideally. This effect is based on the same principle as floaty and punch drift. Lifting the front inside wheel reduces speed loss when drifting. Performing terrain abuse can be challenging, especially since it can be hard to see where to aim. But by far the easiest and clearest example of terrain abuse are the curbs of Auckland. Other examples include the subway track in New York, and the edge of this road in Caribbean Island. Besides minimizing speed loss on turns, another objective when racing in Asphalt 9 is to effectively manage airtime. This next trick is something that helps with that. Drifting before airtime, or as I like to call it, micro-drifting, causes the car body to lift up slightly, making it more prone to catching airtime. The trick is simple to perform, just do a short drift and then fire nitro immediately after, but it can be used in a variety of ways. First of all, it can be used to catch airtime in places where it would otherwise be difficult or impossible to do so such as on this hill in Scotland. This is especially useful for slower cars since fast cars tend to catch airtime more easily. It can also be used to catch more airtime on flatter ramps, such as this one in Paris. Two things to keep in mind here are that the landing tends to be less stable when performing this move, so be wary of physics. And also that microchips should not be performed on ramps that already give a lot of airtime, as that will only make the landing speed worse. Finally, microdrifting can help put you in a better position to perform other tricks, such as the Cairo wall hop shortcut. This is especially useful with slower cars. Perfect run delay is a trick that helps with nitro management, as it allows you to control when you will receive the perfect run nitro top up. In Asphalt 9, perfect runs are obtained after every 10 seconds of not hitting any walls or barriers, except at the start, where it can vary from around 11 to 14 seconds depending on the car. So to perform perfect run delay, all you need to do is hit a wall 10 seconds before you want to receive the perfect run. This technique is important because perfect runs can go to waste if they're obtained while your nitro bar is full, so you need to make sure that you're getting perfect runs when you need them. While perfect run delay is simple to execute, knowing when to use it can be a challenge because it requires a lot of planning ahead. But here are some examples where perfect run delay is useful. In this clip, I perform perfect run delay before the Cairo loop to extend my shockwave to get back up to speed more easily. This is one of the most common and well-known examples of perfect run delay. Here, I used it on a glacier in Greenland to be able to shockwave after a drift. And here I used it on a barrier in New York to similarly shockwave after a drift. The gap trick is the simplest technique in the list, and it allows you to get a small amount of airtime. All you need to do is drive over a raised corner in the road, and you will get a short burst of airspeed. However, the applications of this trick are limited, as the only two places that I can remember where this trick is useful are in San Francisco and in Osaka. In general, pro Asphalt 9 players should know all the basic places where you can get easy airtime, such as in this ledge in Scotland. This strategy helps you control the speed of your T60s, which has numerous applications. To perform it, rapidly triple tap the brake, which will result in a slower 360 than with a double tap. If used on ramps, this technique should be combined with the late 360 timing, which will give you a slow and controlled 360, and will have you go higher on the ramp. Triple tap 360 is useful for when you want to land straight after executing a 360, such as in the Greenland Volcano. It can also be used when performing a floaty drift, which will result in a more controlled 360 with potentially better speed. These types of floaties do require even more room than regular floaties, however. 
There are also cases on ramps where a triple tap 360 may not be ideal though, and a double tap early 360 combo is preferred. This will give you faster and less controlled 360s, but which go lower in the air. These cases include situations where you want to go lower on a ramp to improve landing speed, such as this ramp in Shanghai, and situations where you want to rapidly change direction after landing and perform a dog floaty, such as in this hill in Osaka. Now I know this can all seem very complicated, but as a general rule of thumb, the best 360 speed and timing is the one which allows you to land straight after a jump and prevent overspins. And with that, this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you guys so much for watching and make sure to subscribe if you enjoyed the video and you want to see more. If you guys have any questions for me, make sure to leave them in the comments and I will be glad to help you out. If you want to see more commentary videos on my channel, make sure to check out this one, where I react to my performance in the most recent Asphalt 9 esports competition. Alright, see you guys in the next video.